How well do you know your fellow gamers? Sure, maybe you can tell me their favorite game or favorite game night dinner, but how many hats do they own? How confident are they at cooking without recipes? Or how many M&Ms can they fit in their mouth? All these questions will be answered and more in Fun Facts. This party game has people answer strange questions like those, but are also trying to have everyone be able to sort the answers from smallest to largest. Do you believe you can get a perfect score with your friends? Does this game deserve a perfect score? Let's find out. Each player will receive an arrow and a pen in the color of their choice, writing a name or symbol on one side to denote them, as well as leaving the other side blank for answers of questions. One player will receive the star that will denote them as the first player for the first round. Then draw eight of these question cards. There are plenty for you to draw from, and those will be the questions you use this game. Now, the questions come in two main flavors. They will ask a question asking for a number. Some of them will just simply be something like, how many push-ups do you think you can do in a row? While others may have this little yellow arrow here saying something like, how good are you at cooking without a recipe with a number from zero to 100? So for now, let's stick with the push-up one. After asking the question, each player will secretly write what they believe the answer is for themselves. Now, keep in mind during this time, you are not allowed to give hints or talk in any way about what you think your answer is. When you are done, make sure to flip over your tile and starting with the person who has a star places their arrow in the center. Now going clockwise, each player can add their arrow to the arrow in the center, either below, above, or if they feel like it, in between. Once all players have their arrows in the center, the first player may choose to move their arrow. For example, let's say that you thought you could do more push-ups than the green arrow player. Once it is set, you're going to flip over all of the arrows, showing everyone's answer. Now your goal was to sort them from lowest to highest. Here you can see that this 30 does not belong there. For every number that would not belong, you need to remove that arrow. You are working together, so keep in mind that you are trying to remove the least amount of arrows. Now, with this, we have four numbers in a row, therefore earning us four points for this round. You will add those points onto the star. So in this case, it was blank, but let's say you earned another four points, which would allow us to erase this, and then add those points. Afterwards, pass the star to the next player, in which case everyone takes their arrow back, and then ask the next question. Repeat this for eight cards, and then compare your score to the chart on the back and see how well you know each other. So this is a light, fun party game, definitely designed and I think worthy of the title Icebreaker, as it makes a way for you to learn a lot more about the people around you at the table. Now, the first thing I wanna really talk about are the components because eight of these are very nice to have so you can play with a large group. But also that a lot of the dry erase games I can think of usually give you a board you can write on, but if you need to hide information, you're worried if you had to put it face down because it smudges. These have little lips. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, go back to the overhead, but it allows you to write the name and answer without ever worry about smudging occurring when you have to flip it to reveal something or hide it. So it's a small thing, but it's something I really appreciated. And I know it's a little bit harder for maybe a bigger board, but something I would like to see more often. And I'm really happy with how many questions they provided. It's a huge stack with a lot of weird ones, but nothing I think too crazy. If there is a question you don't like, it says in the rules, yeah, just feel free to skip that one and draw another one from the box so you still answer eight. And that way, I think unless you play a lot with the same people, it's not likely that you're gonna get a question and be like, all right, we know the answer to this one, guys. Let's just write it out this way. But in terms of just the gameplay itself, it really comes down to the people at the table. It's just who you're playing with, how much do you know about each other? Because for me, most of the time, I was playing with people, my usual game group, who I know very well. We've been playing games with each other for quite some time, and not even just games, just hanging out. So it's usually not too hard to... Not, maybe I can't give you an exact number, but we sort of know the general range of everyone's answers so that when reveals happen, it's not that we got perfect scores all the time, but it was usually like a... Oh, okay, you, you put an 82 above my 83 or 5. So it was like little nuances, nothing that was like a big shock, like, oh my God, you think you're that good? There was like once, well, sort of twice that happened, but nothing, none of those like big out loud laughing moments just quickly play through eight rounds. Now, I did have one chance. I actually got to bring this to another meetup where there are two new people I didn't really know there. 
and we played it and it was maybe a bit more interesting for me, but I will say the other people all knew each other really well. I was sort of the newer person there, I guess you could say, and still didn't have that big awesome reveals that I was hoping for in most kinds of party games. And that really just puts a little bit of a damper on it for me because I can't help but compare it to others in particular where I've seen this happen before and then another game by the same company that's similar and that's just one as well as actually Fibbage from the Jackbox games. So first, Fibbage, if you don't know, is a Jackbox game in which you are trying to answer questions, also put out lies and trick other people. But they had one mode where you can add personalized questions that was really designed for everyone to add questions of, about themselves and then try to trick people. And I remember when that first came out, we're like, oh, this is really cool. This is fun. And those definitely had a bit more of those funny moments, mostly because you can write really weird answers since it's not a number, it's a word. But it quickly did not become a game we came back to because... It just didn't feel like it was something that was hugely shocking, hugely exciting, not as crazy as finding out about some weird science experiment or what someone got sued over that you see in more of the other Fibbage games. But it just feels like that when you have questions that are very personal, the more you already know everyone, the more that I think you're not shocked too much unless someone is really hiding a lot of information. And if they are hiding information, then I also don't feel like these are the games to play with them as they probably don't feel comfortable sharing a lot of information. Now, this does fall a little bit more under the like, if you don't like deck building games, don't play a deck building game with that person. But it is something you have to consider as anything that has you bring your own personal life into the game is something you need to make sure everyone is comfortable with. Just One, on the other hand, is a party game in the same vein in terms of dry erase, playing with a group, same company. I even thought maybe same designers. It's not. But in that case, Just One, someone is going to be a judge each round. You write a secret answer on a board, then reveal it to them without trying to say much. They have to look at all these clues and try to guess one word what everyone could be referring to. We have a review on that so you can learn more. The reason I bring that up is because it feels like they're in the same niche. Well, it's not revealing about everyone else. It's sort of a party game meant to bring in a lot of people, dry erase, same company, the same feeling. But whenever I play just one, there's so many times when there's a reveal and you just see everyone like, mm, because you put the same answer or you someone put something really funny. And then when everyone looks like, oh, we've got this. And the judge looks at all the answers and they're like, I have no idea. And everyone's like, how could you not get it from this word? It had so much more of that energy I want to see in party games, that sort of excitement, that shock, those moments where everyone's laughing really hard or just stunned at everyone. At least to me, this game didn't bring that. I didn't have the option to try this out with a bunch of strangers who I've never met before. That's not usually how I test these games out. And maybe you would have gotten more of that as everyone doesn't really know each other. They're shocked someone put such a weird number. But in terms of playing this with and bringing it to parties where, at least for me, I have a pretty good knowledge and everyone already knows each other, it really didn't bring that energy and excitement that I hope to see when it comes to party games. Crits and misses for fun facts. Crits. This is a party game, but definitely also falls under the icebreaker game as you are answering questions and learning about each other. When it comes to icebreakers, usually this means they work best in large groups. So the fact that this can fit eight people is perfect, as I think this suits best at large gatherings, especially if not many people know each other. I like the components in particular. I love how the arrows are designed. This may seem like a silly crit, but to me, compared to all the dry erase games I've played, the way that they are built works so well, I think they are worthy of a crit on their own. Misses. I don't think this game is the greatest for those who either know a lot about everyone at the table or don't feel comfortable sharing. Yes, the questions are benign, but sometimes people just don't like answering these kinds of questions. And of course, that could be said about people who just don't like any kind of game, but because this involves personal answers, it's something to be noted. And on the other end, for those who really know everything about everyone at the table, you're not gonna have those moments of true shock and maybe you won't score perfectly, but odds are you're just going to be off by a few numbers here and there every time and nothing that is going to shock the other players at the table. This really is connected to the previous miss, but for me, there never were those moments of high energy excitement or shock. 
A lot of times when I play party games, especially where something is hidden then revealed, you want those moments when everyone is laughing or just shocked and saying, how could you put that answer down or why did you think that? Something that brings that jovial spirit of the word party to the party game. Here, it was basically reveal, uh-huh, okay, next round. Games go quickly so you can easily play games back to back, but it never had that moment where people lost track of time and just wanted to answer a bunch of questions because they were just having so much fun with what was going on. So unfortunately, this game was a bit of a miss for me. And I don't think that's because the game is poorly designed. Component-wise, I think they hit it out of the park. Not only do I praise these little pieces, and I think they're really awesome and want to see anything else using dry erase to be something similar, but I think they did a great job with the question selection, most of them not being bad at all, and providing so many that one, you're not going to come across duplicates, but two, if you are uncomfortable for answering one, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to put that one back and just take another one. But the problem is this game is so heavily dependent on the people you're playing with. Yes, every game depends on that. But here, this is a game about learning about who you're playing with. And if you already have a general idea, you're not going to get those exciting moments or anything of interest, I think, from those at the table. Now, I did try this out with some people I didn't know as much about, but it still didn't work as well as that couple probably know enough about each other and I was really the only person that was out of the loop in terms of knowing each other. However, I could imagine this bringing it to something like an icebreaker at a college or with coworkers, something where you're starting to learn about everyone's table who you've never met before. If everyone is in a similar situation, I feel like this game will shine much better. For example, the cooking question, how well do you feel about cooking without a recipe? If you revealed that, maybe because you don't know each other, you're not gonna get that, oh my God, how could you put that? But rather you may get that, oh, hey, you feel really good about cooking. I wanna learn, could you give me some tips? Something that actually makes connections between players, which I think is something worthy of a icebreaker game. I mean, it's almost the point. Unfortunately, in terms of the party game with high energy, I just don't think this brings enough to the table to get at least everyone I play with excited, especially when there are plenty of other games that I think can do just as well. Maybe it's because when it comes to myself and as well as our group, we're not as excited to share information about ourselves, even though we've known each other long enough that we know things that we probably wish the others didn't know. But maybe that is just something that is more for introverts. Maybe it's something that if we had a much more extrovert group, they would find this much more enjoyable. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. If you played this, did you have a blast? Is this going to be added to the party game you always bring around? Or did you have a similar experience like me that you and your group just weren't nearly as energetic when it came to the results at the end of each round? Please let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But for now, that's all for this review. I'll see you next time on Roll for Crit.